Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Robin. Um, Deborah Ladavail. Um, today, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, how to build a roll-up with a veil. Uh, but before that, I'm just going to go quickly um, to you know let you know about what a veil exactly is, so that we get some context about what we're actually doing here. Um, essentially, right? What are the challenges uh, we're facing today in the roll-up space? Um, there's you know multiple roll-ups out there. Roll-ups are essentially trying to scale execution, but uh, at a point after execution, DA or data availability becomes the major bottleneck for Web3 rollups and L2s. Um, and because you need block space, which is not, which is quite expensive on Ethereum, even with blobs right now, uh, uh, post DIP4844, uh, we need excess block space in order to cater to this uh, rollup centric roadmap that Ethereum has. So um, rollups need DA to scale. Um, there's a UX fragmentation with the number of rollups that's popping out every day, and we need a, a framework for unifying all of these uh, different rollups, right? So, um, so like I said, Ethereum rollups have like taken the uh, center stage, right? How many rollups are you using every single day uh, on a monthly basis, or maybe on a weekly basis, or on a yearly basis, right? It's at least, I could say, at least more than three, maybe, or maybe four or five, and this is going to keep on growing. Um, I mean in the next couple of years, in the next couple of months. And a veil DA is uh, this ZK or validity proof uh, driven DA layer that is um, verifiable and secure and allows you to spin up cheap, reliable and secure rollups um, for your use case. Um, and with you know the number of rollups that's being uh, coming up, there's going to be fragmentation and that's why we have a veil nexus that's trying to unify these rollups through proof aggregation um, and asynchronous composability among these different rollups. And uh, by bringing together ecosystems of, di of different chains together, we want to also, uh, you know, be, be sure to bootstrap enough crypto economic security, not only cryptographic security on our network, um, because obviously if we are, uh, we are connecting through Nexus uh, cryptographically all these ecosystems together, but well, the problem is there is also a cryptographic thing that we need to be uh, thinking about, and that means uh, Avail Fusion kind of allows you uh, to provide that additive cryptoeconomic security, which I'll go into soon, right? So essentially, like the permissionless unification layer for Web3, Avail DA, Avail Nexus, and Avail Fusion. Um, so what is Avail DA exactly? It is the you know a validity proof based DA layer for the next generation trust minimized. Uh, applications, so you can basically spin up a rollup on Avail uh, using Avail DA, right? And um, I don't know how many of you know what DA exactly means, but to just give you a quick brief on that, right? Uh, on a monolithic chain, for example, right? For example, Ethereum, if you just take Ethereum as it is, it does the execution, it does the consensus and ordering and data availability um, uh, of, of that chain itself, right? So you get a bunch of transactions, right? And you execute it. Right, uh, and how do you execute this, right? You execute this with this data that is there. So um, if anyone wants to verify if the execution was done correctly, you need that data. And this is what data availability means. So on a monolithic chain, this is a given because every full node who is executing these transactions and every validator who is verifying these transactions will have to anyway run a full node. And hence data availability was not much of a conversation before, but as we move to this roll-up centric roadmap, as we start moving into this modular uh, ecosystem that we have, uh, where we're decoupling execution, right? L uh, basically, roll-ups are basically the decoupling execution from the main chain because you have different kind of VMs like zk VM, zk EVM. You can have an uh, EVM or a Solana VM or a Move-based VM, whatever you want, right? And you, when you're offloading, uh, you're decoupling execution here. You can also, in the same way, decouple. Um, data availability from the main Ethereum chain so that uh, you can, one, uh, make it more verifiable and secure. You can use uh, light, uh, light client based uh, sampling as well as easy verifiability and also it's cheap, right? Um, so availability is this uh, modular base layer provides raw block space for chains. Uh, it has a robust validator layer set. Uh, uh, and basically the main thing that you want to uh, understand is here that just imagine Avail DA or Avail as a, a place for you to publish transactions without interpreting it. So Avail does not interpret the transactions that you or the data that you put into Avail. You can put any raw data. It does not matter what it is. Uh, Avail does not 
you know, interpret it in any way. You can, your application can interpret it however it wants to based on your application's logic, and that is the magic of it, right? Um, so that, that means Avail is compatible with all, all of the, uh, you know, uh, VMs out there. Like, it, it is uh, agnostic. It is chain agnostic, it's ecosystem agnostic, it is neutral, it's incredibly neutral. Um, and yeah, so Avail DLI clients is it's yeah. another superpower that we have. Uh, basically, it leverages the KZG polynomial commitments in the block headers to do uh, data availability sampling, which basically means light clients uh, on a, like for example, in Ethereum or in the general context, light clients just pull headers, block headers from the full node, but it is not able to verify if the transactions itself or the block itself is valid, right? It trusts the full node there, right? And the difference here in Avail is the light clients don't have to trust the full load because they themselves can verify using this uh, technique called data available sampling, which I'm not going to go deeper into at this point. But uh, definitely, if you want to, you can reach out to me later, and I can uh, let you, uh, like go a bit more deeper into that. But essentially, it does this thing called data availability sampling, which uh, allows you to trustlessly, like your light client can uh, trustlessly verify that this block is valid and uh, and uh, without you know even downloading the entire block, hence making it light. Um, so it's based on the substrate uh, architecture, um, and yeah, we have a P2P light client network. That means uh, each light client communicates with each other, and we are also we are also able to reconstruct the state of the block uh, because of the P2P light client network. Uh, I'm not going to go more into this. Um, then we have Avail Nexus. So Avail Nexus is this unification uh, uh, or coordination hub that we have for different rollups. So like, imagine we have thousands of rollups that's coming up. Like, like just look at this image that you see here on my right, and uh, you see that for all of these chains that are in this ecosystem, if we want to connect or communicate with each of them, you still you need to have a bridge. Like each line over here is basically a bridge, right? Uh, and this is just for like what seven chains. Imagine there's like hundreds of chains. You need to have a one is to end connection to, uh, from your chain to another chain to be able to communicate with them, and that is a problem. So what does Nexus allow you to do? It basically gives you this uh, one unifying coordination layer uh, using proof aggregation to kind of coordinate among these different layers and uh, verify the execution or the state transition function proofs of these uh, different layers uh, of these different chains. Uh, which you can use for basically uh, enabling asynchronous composability and uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so mostly for the hackathon perspective, um, for you, like Avail DA would be uh, what you would be uh, using. Avail Nexus is still uh, in product, like it's still being uh, developed and would, we're targeting like maybe 2024 or late uh, 2025 as well. Um, yeah, so. Avail Fusion is essentially a unifying layer, needs unified security, and um, because we are now, like I said, if we are con uh, unifying all of these ecosystems together, we need to have crypto economic security guarantees as well, which is what Fusion allows by allowing you to like stake Bitcoin, Ether, and any other roll-up token that you want onto the Avail consensus layer so that you can uh, you know, contribute to the security of the chain itself. right? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, I'm, what I'm going to go into today uh, in terms of like explaining about Avail. So what I want to also go into is um, just uh, try to show you around the our Explorer. Just give me a second. All right, yeah. So this is, one, uh, this is a developer-focused Explorer that we have. So in this, uh, basically, you are able to check out the you know, the transactions, the events that's happening in the network, uh, you'll be able to see like, you know, when a tra uh, balance transfer has happened, uh, when a data availability, uh, um, when someone has sent data to the Avail network and basically you see, you see the data hash over here, um, you can see who has sent it and if you want, you can even go into the block here and uh, you're able to uh, see what all, ex uh, you know, extrinsics have been uh, you know, executed here. Right, so uh, this is at explorer.avail.so, um, which you can also try out. One thing that is uh, really cool here is that when you go to the developer section here, you can actually try out the, the different extrinsics. Extrinsics are basically functions uh, that you have to, uh, that you can use to kind of interact with the Avail node, right? 
um, you can in, uh, you can consider this as like you know uh, interactions that you're doing with the avail node or the uh, to basically do some particular functions. Um, for example, if I go here, if I go to data availability extrinsic, I can now create an application key. So what an application key is is basically like a avails block space. Uh, like when you're sending a data, you can create your own app ID for your address, right? And wh what that does is essentially you can send data to that particular app ID, uh, app ID just saying that, okay, for this particular app ID, I'm sending XYZ data. So what it ha helps you to do is later on when you want to filter data uh, or like you want to retrieve data back from the block, you don't have to download the entire block. You can just filter based on the app ID of your application. So if your app application ID is, number, is three, all you have to do is uh, you know, query based on app ID three and retrieve just that data from the entire avail block. So uh, this is also possible with the light client. So when you're running the light client, you can, uh, if you, like in the config file, there's an option where you can put in the app ID number. And if you do that, your light client will only sample or like fetch data of your particular application. So now you can uh, just run a light client. You don't even have to run a full load. You can just run a light client, fetch that data, and then maybe you want to store it somewhere or you want to do something with that data, you can do that. So it's uh, pretty cool. Um, now, for example, I can also uh, submit data, right? So this is, uh, so you can do this programmatically like with AvailJS, I'll show you how to do that. So, but this is just from the UI perspective. So if I want to send the data ABCD, um, I can send that, like uh, submit transaction. Now, right now, this is at app ID zero, as you can see. So app ID zero is like the uh, default app ID. So in this, all, all the extrinsics are possible. But for any other app ID greater than zero, uh, you can only do data, uh, data submissions. Right? So if you want to do a balance transfer, for example, you have to do it on zero, app ID zero, because that is where uh, all of the extrinsics are enabled. But for anything greater than uh, zero, you can only do data submissions. So right now I'm doing a data submission at zero, which you can also do um, because I haven't created an app ID. But if you if you want, I can show that also. Um, and I'm just so yeah. So you'll need a wallet like Sub Wallet or Talisman or Polkadot.js uh, to use uh, this explorer because this is based on Substrate. And you can see something going on over here. And There's like a 20 second block uh, block time here. Let me check. Okay, I think it should have been submitted. Uh, what is my if I G W? Okay, it should be somewhere here. Yeah. So this is this is the data I submitted here, and uh, you can kind of check it against here. Yeah, so the data I've submitted is this, right? And you can find it over here, and you can basically decode it if you go it over here, right? So you can basically use this explorer to kind of do your developer operations here. But if you want a more user-friendly one, which is much more friendly, like just so that you can maybe just put in a transaction hash and see what's happening, you can use our subscan uh, explorer. Um, which is probably here. So this is at avail-turing.subscan.io. So this is our secondary uh, block explorer. It's taking some time to load. Um, but yeah, basically this is uh, the more user-friendly version, but it's not very developer-friendly. Like you can't like put in the extrinsics and you know test stuff out. That is for the other explorer that I just showed you. But over here, like you can just put in the uh, transaction hash. You can look at the extrinsics here. Uh, you can look at all of this data here. Like you know, all of that is cool. Um, but now what I wanted to show is, um, apart from all of this, there's uh, the, how do you program this, right? How do you interact with the avail network directly with like JavaScript, for example? So we have support for JavaScript, Rust, and Go. So um, for example, the, the one which I did now, submit data, I submitted some data right now. Um, how does that look like in code? Would be uh, here. So like if you go to our GitHub at avail project slash avail, uh, you will go to avail.js, examples, node examples, source, and you see data submission. So what does this even look like? Um, yeah, so <coughs> essentially what you're doing here is 
you're initializing the JS SDK, uh, you are picking some stuff from the config, but essentially what you're doing here is you're initializing the API um, and you are getting the account details, so you're getting the key ring um, and the app ID, right? So like I uh, spoke about the app ID right here, so you can program it to be like whatever app ID you want it to be, um, but essentially over here, it's asking if the in the config, the app ID, if it's zero, just keep it as zero or else uh, you know, use whatever app ID you've configured, right? So basically you need to have an app ID, the nonce, all of that set up, the, what is the data that you're gonna send, and what, how, what you're gonna do here is now, you're gonna use the API, you're gonna call the transaction, uh, uh, and then you're gonna call the data availability extrinsic. So in the UI, how it looked was, uh, let me pull up that UI, I don't really know where it is. Wait. So in this UI, when I went to extrinsics, I called uh, data availability here and submit dot submit data. So this is data availability submit data and on code, like in JS, how it would look like is data API dot TX dot data availability dot submit data and you, then you're inputting the data in, then you're signing and sending it with the account details, the options, which would be like the app ID, the nonce, all of that, and then you're getting a result back and you do whatever you want to do with the result. There's some example for uh, transaction handling and all of that. But essentially, this is what you're doing, right? And then this is how you can also uh, get back whatever data you have to have sent. Basically, you go to the block, uh, you uh, check, you go through the extrinsics that's there, and uh, you find the transaction and get, uh, uh, retrieve the uh, data. So yeah, uh, so this is how it would work on a JavaScript perspective. Uh, for you, and there's multiple different uh, examples. Like if you want to do a, just a balance transfer, for example, uh, there's an example for that, right? So you can just go through this uh, repo and uh, you know let me know if you have any doubts. Um, and now for the hackathon, like right? So what do you need to do? So, so we have got a multiple bounties here. Um, let me check. Yeah, I think we've got multiple bounties. To, yeah, all right. Yeah. So in terms of bounties, what we have is one, best use of Polygon CDK, Arbitrum Orbit, or Stata, Stacker SDK with a build DA. So um, this is, these are basically just frameworks where you can spin up a rollup. So you don't have to basically interact with the build directly. You just have to spin up a rollup already. So Polygon and Arbitrum already have their own tracks for CDK and Ar Ar Orbit. Now we already have an integration with them and you just have to spin up our version of it. Um, and you'll still win, you'll be eligible for their prizes and our prizes as well which is pretty cool, um, and you can build any use case that you want. Um, Stacker SDK is if you want to build like custom application-specific chains, that is uh, like maybe like short-term micro rollups, maybe like if it is like, for example, a game, right? If it is a game, maybe you want the game to maybe live only for the duration of the game, maybe that rollup should only live for the duration of the game, and then after the game ends, maybe the rollup can be discarded away. If that is the case that you want to do, Stacker could be something that you can look into because it is easy to spin up and easy to discard. It is like an ephemeral, uh, ephemeral rollup, basically. Um, so maybe look into that if you want. I can help you get uh, connected with the team. There are some team Stacker members here who are also like, uh, they're, they're good partners with Avail and uh, they also use Avail DA underneath. So all of these things use Avail DA underneath um, as well. And then also, now if you have any use case that has uh, maybe not spinning up a roller, but you want to publish some data to avail, like I just showed you, like submit data to avail, and you want to retrieve it and do something with that, uh, you, can, uh, you can be eligible for the build with avail uh, track, um, and yeah, you can do what uh, you know, specific application you want to build with it. Also, if you are more of a smart contract developer, right? You don't really want to spin up a rollup, or you want you don't want to interact with the whale much, but you want to build some solidity smart contract, for example. We've already deployed an OP stack testnet rollup for you, where you can just deploy your solidity smart contract, and, your, and so you can just deploy your DAP on that and be eligible for some prices there. Um, and then another one is like best core tooling project. So like if you have any ideas on how to improve the whales toolings, uh, for example, like, you know, a DA cost calculator, like, what would it cost, like, just a front-end dashboard that would be, like, um, sending one MB of data to Avail would cost this much, one MB of data to Ethereum would cost this much, maybe to maybe Eigen or Celestia would cost, you know, X, Y, Z amount, right? Um, so something like that would also be pretty cool to see. Um, even validator operations that you can see here, right, uh, in Substrate, essentially, like, the uh, when, uh, when a validator stakes their tokens, 
the rewards are not, uh, you'll need to manually claim it. So maybe you can create um, a script maybe, uh, or a dashboard for people to like claim it on a weekly or a daily basis, something like that. Uh, some tools that can maybe just help the ecosystem as a whole. So these are some tools that you can do. Um, uh, how much time do we have? I think we have time, but so I'll just quickly move on to like um, how to like spin up an Arbitrum orbit chain, just to give you a quick uh, overview of that. So basically, it's pretty simple actually. We've actually documented all in the docs here. Um, basically, you will need a Docker, and with the Docker, you just uh, just pull uh, pull the node and the uh, uh, you know the the requirement prerequisites from here. You kind of change the ENV so. What you'll need to do is, once you've downloaded uh, the requirements here and built, um, you can you have to modify the env file. So what that would look like is, um, so on the env file you need to basically uh, yeah. So on the env file, okay, this is not zooming. Yeah, okay. So on the uh, env file you need to mention the rollup creator address, which is already mentioned on the doc here. So it, this address you need to paste over here, which I've already done, and then you need to put in your DevNet private key, uh, which is a spare one which I've put in, so it doesn't really matter what you do with it at this point, um, but yeah. Um, so you have to put that in, then all you have to do is go into the script folder and modify the config file. So what that would look like is, um, if you go to config.ts here, um, we've got a config file, and you just have to basically um, so based on your machine, so if you have an AMD machine, AMD 64 architecture machine, you need to put the Wasm model root as this, and if it is an ARM architecture machine, you have to put this, and just put in this config, essentially, and it would look basically as this. And pretty much you just run deploy, your smart contracts are deployed with hard hat, uh, you'll get an output similar to this, right? Um, this probably will take some time, which is why I'm not running it uh, live with you right now. It will probably take maybe five minutes, 20, uh, 10 minutes sometimes to just compile and run because it's being deployed on uh, Arc Sepolia and depends on the network conditions over there. So I don't want to you know, risk wasting time on it. Um, but yeah, essentially, this is what it's doing. It's deploying these contract rollups over there and uh, you will get some information. So as you see here in this image here, right, um, you'll need to uh, keep these contract addresses safe, right? Uh, over here, once the contracts are deployed, you need to keep the contract uh, addresses safe, you need to ke keep the block number safe, because eventually, in the next step, uh, when, when you're doing the orbit setup script here, so you get cloning the setup script, uh, get into that folder, uh, just change the node config, so how that node config will look like is would, it would be looking like this. So basically, in this line, uh, let me if I can see if I can word wrap it. Okay, yeah. So basically in uh, this part, what you need to change is you need to change your chain ID based on the config that you had initially put in. So like uh, when you had initially put in, yeah, somewhere over here you, you must have put in your chain ID, right? So you need to configure it based on that. You need to change that. You need to also add in some of the other important information that is defined, uh, it should be defined somewhere here, let me check. Oh, no, not this. Okay, anyway, so, <laughs> it, uh, I think there was a change in the docs, but anyway, uh, if you actually go through Ah, yes, sorry, my bad. <laughs> so yeah, in that uh, config file, you need to change these things based on the contract addresses and all of the information that you have based on your deployed smart contracts. And it's like, you know, basically you need to change the chain ID, the name, the initial chain owner. So these are, uh, this would be an address. Um, again, this would be, this would also be uh, the private key and the address, uh, the seed phrase of your avail wallet you need to put in your app ID, so you need to create your own app ID for this. You, you can create it programmatically if you want, which is again an example that is already provided, or uh, you can also, uh, yeah, or you can also go to a website like this that we have created, so 
All you have to do is uh, sign in with your wallet, uh, and you can just uh, click any wallet, give some name for your, uh, yeah. so you can give a name, so like I can give it a name like testing one, two, three. Um, so I'm gonna create an app ID for my uh, particular um, wallet here. So I'm just gonna create a app ID, oh, okay, my bad. I, I hit two transactions at once, that's why it's happening, but it should work, and then uh, what would happen is you'll get an app ID here, which you would replace in your uh, config in this. Right, so the app ID would be coming down somewhere. Yeah, somewhere around here, um, which you'll need to configure. So all of the details that you need to configure is um, on this documentation itself. So it has already listed the parameters you need to uh, change, and then you just Docker compose up and uh, it runs. So like this is basically the chain running at this point on Docker. Um, you'll have the, uh, you know, the URL that you need, the, the endpoints that you need to interact with the network. Network will also be uh, there, uh, which you can use. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I know we're short on time, so that's why I didn't want to like get into the actual implementation and just went through the docs. But we have a booth here if you want to, you know, if you have any problems in executing this, just let me know and um, I'll be here to help. Um, also, yeah, we have. Um, a Polygon CDK docs also. It is not officially on the docs, but you can use this document as well. Um, I've added it uh, on the resources page of our prizes thing. So there's a hackathon dev onboarding cheat sheet uh, where you can like find all of these documentations already listed out so that you know it's easy for you to do it. If there's any questions, I can take it if there's time. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, if there's any questions. This kind of like configuration let me kind of build my own like fork avail and support other like rollups or any network. If I want to use avail to support any other rollups which is not currently supported, is it possible? And if yes, how? Thank you. Um, so, okay, yeah. So you can build, so, so currently avail supports um, OP stack. Orbit, CDK, I think we support Madara, and uh, I think we're working on an adapter with ZK Sync as well. So if there is any other roll-up stack that you want to integrate with, uh, you will have to build an adapter for that particular stack, right? Um, you could build that uh, for the hackathon maybe, but I don't know how complex it would be to build for just maybe one day or two days of a hackathon. It takes, it takes pretty much some time, so it's more complex. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to attempt at it, you can. Uh, you just have to build an adapter. You can look at the reference of our already existing adapters and see what's possible. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.